They, are, they have an urgency to win today, but they, they need to not put the results ahead of the process. And W-I-N, what's important now, Krista? There you go. Yeah, she really understood not just what happens on the court, but the student-athletes and what they needed to focus on off the court as well. See if you toss some help, D. There's a mismatch with the size. This is an Oregon team. You said it. They've got some length. They're going to try to take advantage of that. This is a team that's had some struggles. Two and nine in conference play. Coach Graves told us, we're going to use our length. We're going to try to cause some problems for teams. And they do. They absolutely do. But they're a young team. You know, they're without Peyton Scott, the, yep. the, the projected or the starting point guard. And that makes a huge difference. Yep. Lost her in the very first game, five minutes in with the knee injury. The transfer from Miami of Ohio. But an incredible point guard that they needed. And they the banker way outside for Jenna Johnson and a smile on her face. You know, Krista, we always teach taught in camp. The backboard is your friend. <laughs> you got that right. Facing that zone defense, Oregon stays in zone a lot. It's kept them out of some foul trouble this year, though, and not a lot of depth. Yeah, I think um, Utah, in practice yesterday, worked probably 30 minutes on their zone offense. And you might think just because you shoot it well, you're great in the zone. Nice little lefty hook by Jay. Um, you know, that oh, it's zone. But, you know, this is a long extended zone. It's not going to be easy for them, necessarily. It gets back quickly. They'll kick it out to Wilkie. If they can hit some of these threes, that might break down the zone. But instead, with side board, goes to Jay. But you're already liking the ball movement better than they had Friday night. They're yep. getting it side to side. Yep. Utah, tough one against number 17, Oregon State. Just could not get their offense going. Defense on both sides. You know, Utah held Oregon State to 58 points, but being held to 44, the Utes were. And Sutton, high post, can't get it. And they'll say it stays here. Che giving the Ducks a second chance. You know, she's a tough box out. <laughs> She certainly is. There is Lynn Roberts, the head coach of the Utah Utes. They come in 7-5 and five in conference play. And a little chip on the shoulder. We talked about that on Friday, that some games that were so close could have gone either way, and they just weren't able to get the Ws. And now losing a bit of their depth. No Neepkins. They don't have Deja right now. Deja Young has been out. As Che again, little lefty. Baby hook. They can Seems cream out. Dil Jabbar proud. Yes, no doubt. She had 16 boards. And led all scorers in their game in Eugene on the 26th of January as Healy can't get an opening and away from Che. Johnson's going to try to attack the zone. The queen as well, but look what Che does. She makes you make changes to what you want to do. That one no good for Peely. But good decisions by Utah because they were shooting into the length on Friday night, and now they're not. They're just continuing to kick out and, uh, and uh, get the shots they want. They're getting good threes. Drive by Van Sluten, so attacking. Utah has won the last three meetings between these teams, but they've either been in Eugene or in Las Vegas for the tournament. Before that, though, five in a row for the Ducks here in Salt Lake City. Ooh, I'd love to be a spoiler today if they can. Peely just cannot get away from the length of Basham. Well, I've been impressed with the growing attendance here in the Husband Center in Utah yeah. the last year or two. Absolutely. Because, you know, I've been here for 20 plus years. Well, not 20 plus. We were only the, the Pac-12 for however many years, Krista, but you know, never really a huge fan base, and that's changing. Yep. Thanks to Lynn Roberts and her staff and yep. all that they're doing. Yeah, you're so right. This team has been fun to watch. She's been putting together a squad that gets it done. It's a fun style of play. Much-needed bucket and three for Utah. Well, Maddie Welke could not have been more open. And prior to that, Jenna Johnson on the weak side glass got the putback to give Utah the lead now. High post shot from Chamberlain just off. That's really Kennedy Basham's shot, so something they probably want to look at guarding. Lynn Roberts in practice yesterday was talking about tempo. You know, they're at altitude. They're tired. They're, yeah. they're playing a lot of minutes. we got to push, make, and miss. But I do feel like they're playing a little better tempo already. Movement without the basketball. Johnson back on the in line, and Peely finds her, and it's a 7-0 run for the Utes. After about three minutes, fresh legs in. You've got Izzy Palmer for Utah, and now on the interior, you've also got Samantha Crisp. And that's the versatility of Oregon. And if Sarah Rambis has checked in for the Ducks as well, there's Rambis trying to keep it alive on the 
Deep side boards instead. Another chance. Didn't hit the rim. Get the shot off. They will. Vieta raising the iron, and it's in the hands of Jay. Morgan had off to a great start. Three for six shooting, but since then, one for six. Jay feeling out the D this time on the right side, banks it up. He's uh, just an incredibly improved player from a season ago in so many different areas. I think we have two of the most improved players in the conference in this game today with uh, Billy Che and Enish Vieta. Both of them are just having incredible years yeah. and have shown tremendous improvement. Absolutely, and I think for Vieta playing for the Port Portuguese national team, that experience as the air ball from Palmer is tracked down by McQueen. Johnson will take the three and sticks it. Extra effort. Paying off. Utah struggled on Friday behind the arc. A team that averages 11 per game. They only hit three and they took 33, but today already three of nine out there. Extra possession, extra pass. Jenna Johnson with the hot hand. Utes number one in the nation in three-point mates. They average about 11 a game. Peely back on. She's going to have a couple out there. They need her to get going. With a minute and a half left in the first. I agree. I think that's really key that they may be. It's a little harder in zone to run yep. plays to individual players. So some of it's just going to have to be... Uh, hits that one there. Another one for the Utes. Their fourth three of this ball game. That's something that will maybe open some things up for the interior if they can continue to do that. There's the pass off the mark by the Ducks. The turnover gives Utah an opportunity. Reese Ross has checked in for the Utes. 20 in pink. Into the high post. Queen. Up the screen for oh, nice yeah. Ross was open momentarily, and then the length and blocking ability of Basham came over. You can't hesitate on this. Another one more pass in the corner to Kennedy McQueen. And that's this is this is what Utah needs. They need balance with their scoring, getting more than one or two people going. Shot clock to two. Palmer takes it, rattles it in good. Is he Palmer? struggled a bit as of late. 0 for 3 against Oregon State. She was 0 for 4 at Oregon, so that's a big one, and it's a 9-0 run. Yeah, and she had a huge trip in Washington's. I mean, she scored yeah. really well, so um, she's kind of good for those types of shots. I've seen this that, that kid play for a few years now. For just 10 per game, she'll get a little breather. She had 10 points, 10 boards at Eugene. She's at 10 points right now with one quarter in the book. It's going to be fun to see where she gets to. Yep, she'll take a seat. A little smaller lineup out there for Utah as Lonnie White has checked in. Billy. Oh, round it out. Down. Those are the ones that start to get in your head just a little bit. Utah definitely trying to get Alyssa Peely some looks and trying to get a shot to go for her. As they continue to face this zone defense, going to have to box out with a little smaller lineup out there, and they do. They also just need to do what you do really well. Palmer can't get it. Peely trying to keep it alive, and they'll say, yep, it'll go the other direction. Morgan not. Not a three-point shooting team for the most part, but wow, they're shooting 40% from everywhere else. This crowd, this yeah, crowd wanted to travel. They did. And a whistle. Utah not giving Ula Chamberlain any room to get that three off. And a great setup, high, low. That was Che looking into Basham, and she gets fouled in the middle of the line. We got to make it tough on our opponents. I said in the open, tallest team in the conference, but. I think they might be the tallest starting lineup in the nation. Yeah, they might be. Just, uh, they might be. Right. One for two for Basham. Six-point Utah lead. Lonnie White, fan favorite in the game. Yeah, fans love them some Lonnie. I was really impressed with her at practice yesterday. She says she talks and yep. she pays attention. Yep. She's always chatting out there, keeping the energy up. Sluton semi using the screen on that one. She and Basham over there on that side. Here's Che back out to Van Sluton, and she's going to get it back against Peely. 
Awesome spin move. And Slitten with the finish. Great Van Slitten, the sophomore. That's her money move. They're really kind of the veterans. And again, she's only a sophomore. Yeah, they, those are two super sophomores for Kelly Graves. Future is bright in Eugene, Oregon. Crowd wanting a foul call. And the six, seven sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. Played in just 16 games last year. She didn't hurt in the season opener a year ago. I would consider this her first real season playing. And she's getting yeah. great opportunities. And, you know, she just needs to keep um, taking advantage of them. And you know, she's not been a real super physical low block player. I know coaching staff's working on her getting more comfortable down there. But she is a good shooter, so a little uncharacteristic today. Ball fake by White, and then the dish off to Johnson inside. I love when they slice and dice the zone. An assist for Lonnie White. And the first field goal of the second quarter, and now steal by Peely. They've got numbers. Takes the assist. Lays it up good. Well, I thought she was going to dump it down to the right end. Instead, she kept it. You know, that was part of the right decision, but man. That, that was a fun one. I hope we get to see that one again. Peely, she had 16 at Oregon, eight boards in that one. And for her, that, those are the first points of the game so far. She's had a tough time getting a, a shot to go. Outside to Sammy Wagner, who's checked in, way off to the right. Richard freshman. Yeah, she is a good shooter, so good contest by Utah on that play. Again, more length in a guard spot at 6-1. A typical Oregon teams tend to have those long guards. Wilkie, I love the confidence that this sophomore has been building. And the long lineup back out, Ben Sluton, Che, as well as Basham in the and one. She says, yep, count it, I'm going to the line. Yeah, a little miscommunication there. Great, great tag in. Talk about some of their hobbies. Much more for you in that time. Billy Chase, so yep. improved. I'm just so impressed with her. Leads the league in rebounding. Um, Leads in double doubles. In double doubles. She's you. averaging yes. a double double. You know, averaging really something. A double. You know, seven points a game last year, 13 points per game. And look at the big, impressive post players that she faces every single game, and most of the time a double team. Great point. Yeah, no, nothing, no one's giving her a lot. I mean, she just doesn't have that perimeter game around her and probably not getting the recognition she deserves at times in this conference just because of her record. Shot clock running down to five. Vieta looking for help. Johnson gets it oh. quickly out of the lucky scoop to Vieta. I mean, she couldn't quite get it off in there inside. <laughs> Started to warm up. Here's Gray. High arc or swish. What a pretty Three, shot. Yeah. You just talked Gray. about it. Yeah, pretty she's... Pretty. That's that screen, rescreen play. It's hard to guard. You might need to chase her up next time. And ducks within seven. Wilkie. Now back up to a nine-point lead in the paint. We call that the money spot. When you just flash in below the free throw line in the two-three zone, good things happen. Eight points for Wilkie. She's hit a couple of threes and then... Cuts into the lane. Pass off the mark to Che. The double team was there. And Utah trying to push tempo. You talked about that. They haven't really been able to get a lot of fast break opportunities. No, for Samantha Crisp. Samantha Crisp, the sophomore transfer from Boston U. Played every game last year and had seven starts. Oregon's second in the nation in fouls per game. They only average 12 per game. I love that stat. It's, it's brilliant. You know, they got to stay out of foul trouble. they got to keep, especially their big three, Chance Gray, Grace Van Sutton, and Philly K. We're now seventh turnover for the Ducks. They average 14 a game. Utah, 11 points off of turnovers. And I just gave one up there. McQueen, too much. And around, and Vieta tracks it down. The hustle plays adding up. Skip across to Wilkie. Good passing for Utah. Johnson in the high post. Sticks it here. That's beautiful. Just ping, ping, ping. Making his own work. 
Yep. Inside, outside, back in. I feel like the zone's been extended way out. They know the three-point threat that Utah is, but that leaves things open inside, and Johnson makes him pay. Here's high post shooting from Rambus, and she gets it. Sarah Rambus, great job to shutting all of these post feeds. McQueen got the shot off, but cannot get it, and that will do it. Get some more shots for Chance Gray. That yes. might open up the inside a little bit, so we'll see if they're going to do that. But, I mean, gosh, this has been to Utah. 12 assists, 2 turnovers. Yeah. You know, they're nationally one of the top teams in the country with assist-to-turnover ratio. 12 assists on 14 made field goals, and you set it just 2 turnovers for the Utes. And an incredibly efficient first half for them as working the way inside, but a travel call instead on Kennedy Bash and see if the Ducks can kick it all up a notch. And find somebody to go along with Che on the scoring end. Quick passes from Utah, right baseline. Just long, and that one's out of play, and it goes the other way. I asked Lynn, what, you know, do you need anything else from Peely? You know, and, and she's like, no. Score the way she's scoring are going to be really important for Utah down the stretch and in the postseason. Yeah, Peely draws so much attention from every single team, and an aggressive play from Van Sluten gets her to the line. First free throw good for the sophomore out of Toledo. McDonald's All-American. And did not play against Utah. That was the only kind of like Peely in the sense of a matchup nightmare. Yeah. You know, with, with her true position is probably really the four, and she like Chance Gray is playing out of position. Yeah. But it also makes her kind of harder to guard because she's so big down. There, you know, because what she does is she isos and backs people down. And that time Peely against a very long double team. Chamberlain, her first start of the season, and she sticks it. Senior out of Medford, Oregon. I love it. You know what? I'm just going to take this pull-up shot. This is more my, more my game. Chamberlain's first start. She was a walk-on to this team, Charlie. And then this past summer, they were able to reward her with a scholarship big mom at Wilkie. It looked like she was going to drop the ball, and instead she sticks the three. You know, one of the things I love about this kid, she had the force pass the last possession, and she comes back, and she wanted that. She's like, let me make up for this. 11 points. That's a third three. Was really, really finding her place. Transferred in from Wisconsin this past year, but she's got a confidence about her. Help Dion Che moving away. Good job by Basham and a good look from Che to find her. Taking turns, cutting under each other. No one in double figures yet for the Ducks. Johnson over to Peely. The help D from Chamberlain got the shot. Can't get it. Just short. Some contact. No whistle. The frustration it looked like from Peely. Chamberlain got a test. The spin. She gets it to go. She takes it right with Pieta. Well, Ulo Chamberlain played at South Bedford, a great, great high school program, and then she played at USD and Weber State, so she, she's a walk-on, a certain scholarship, but it wasn't like she wasn't a Division I yep. basketball player. It was a great find, because she kind of decided, oh, I think I'm just going to go to school. And only averaging a couple points a game, but she can hit the three, she can extend the D. She was the all-time leading scorer out of South Medford High. One for two for Vieta. Same high school as Donovan Hunter. Ah. We've got some good athletes coming in and out of there. First point for Vieta on the game. She's averaging eight a game. That's another player I think they'd like to see get going yeah. today. Inside to Basham, and she draws the contact. 57% free thrower. She had struggled to still... Quite a bit of play left in this second half. She, pace has been slowed down just a little bit compared to the first half, I think. Queen drawing the defense in the air, almost loses it and does. That's a good sign for Oregon getting that 50 50 ball. What oh, a timeout called by the Ducks. Kennedy Williams is back in running the point now. Sarah Rambus also, and there's a shot from the right post. And Sluton adds to her totals. They worked a good hour on their zone defense yep. yesterday. I mean, they were you know, absolutely determined to do a great job against Utah in their zone, and they sure are. Well, they shut them down there. Shot clock winding down. Van Sluton gets out running, so they're turning around what Utah wants to do to them. They yeah, they're... they're Getting stops or getting turnovers. That's my game. Down by 14 earlier. 
And this is usually Utah's quarter. You know, they've been yeah. really good in the third quarter. They've had some big wins. And at Oregon on the 26th. It was good to see Kennedy Williams. She was just kind of a, a senior pickup for transfer from Liberty. An extra addition to help them maybe run the point. As long rebound into the hands of Vieta. Yeah, I like that double on Keeley helping out Maddie Wilkie on Grace Van Soten. That's the shot they've been looking for. Well, I guess who's starting to step up? But <laughs> Oregon made the past her beautiful rotation on her shot and the footwork. She's an interesting player that we'll see at the next level. She's a tough matchup. This is a very tough matchup and very unique. People think, oh, yeah. she's too short. I'm telling you, that girl, <laughs> I mean, that's harder to defend than somebody 6'2 or 6'3. Yep. Van Sluten continues to attack. Yeah, she's Van Sluten against Peely right now. Yeah, she's on a mission this half. 14 points for her with just under two minutes left in the third. Lonnie White back on for the Utes. Peely flashing the high post, trying to get some space to help the always coming over. Vieta around and out. Oregon's been on a roll. They have made four of their last five. A miss there, though, on the drive by Gray. Unbelievable help side on that transition take by Vieta. Jenna Johnson, she had a hot hand in the first half. 16 first half points for her. And that's where she sits now. The rookie, High Arthur, right through. Four of seven behind the arc for Wilkie as that one will go for Rambus, but extra effort by Che, the weak side, so tough to stop. And she just, she's doing such a great job now of keeping the ball high. So once she gets it, you know, it's over. Nobody can, can play at her height. Wilkie, way outside the arc, long rebound. Oh, and they're going to get the foul as Peely was trying for the O board to keep it alive. So right here, way too much time and space for Maddie Wilkie. And just two people, doesn't matter. Too strong, keeps it up high. Nice finish by Che. And this crowd does not like that call. <laughs> <laughs> che, and, uh, che at 6'8". We should also mention she's from Calgary, Alberta, but really hadn't had a lot of experienced organized basketball coming into her college play at Oregon. Really only about maybe five seasons at the most. At the most, yeah. So she's very new and young to the game. Yeah. But boy, has she grown and continued to get better and better. Yeah, credit her work ethic and the Oregon coaching staff for the development. Absolutely. Gray shot no good. Clock winding down. Five seconds left. Can Utah get a look? They will. We'll keep it on fire, and she still is. Oh. Gray, she does it on the defensive end. Runs the floor. Does it on the offensive end. Maddie Welke is... On fire. I can't even imagine being a 10-year-old if you're Gianna Nipkins and getting that, that news. You know, our fabulous director, Lori Brooks, has battled breast cancer twice. She's a fighter. She's a winner. And we love that. Kenny Blackburn, one of our colleagues, she's still battling it. And uh, it's just, it affects everybody. But we certainly love these games where you can get some recognition. Yes, celebrate our amazing yes. survivors. Absolutely. And the uh, crowd is celebrating Lonnie White. Yes, they are. Knocking down that three. <laughs> She's really had, having a good game. How about four of seven behind the arc in the third quarter alone for Utah? That was much needed. Yeah, and that one bit off for Chamberlain. She can hit it out there. Coming into this one, 48% three-point shooter. She's getting guarded a little harder now. <laughs> she is, and that was her just her first three-point attempt. Shot short for Peely, follows the shot, gets another chance. I think the hustle plays, and I think Kelly Graves alluded to this at halftime, hustle points and plays have been favoring this Utah team. And another third quarter. Not the third quarter, though. In You're the right. third quarter, right. I think uh, they listened to Coach at halftime and did better, but um, you know, they just got to keep working on it. Also add that Neepkins uh, is on track to progress yes. back with it was Frank. She's true. She's had a little scooter that she had for a while. She's off the scooter. She's got the single crutch in the boot. So uh, one step at a time. But good to see that as well. Indeed. Utah 12 offensive rebounds to just two for Oregon. 
much it would affect Utah, and it's affected them, but they, but maybe not as much as people thought. You know, yeah. people have stepped up, next woman up, it's just it was part of the game. Certainly so, they didn't have Izzy Palmer after the third game, she was their starting point guard. It's taken her some time to kind of get back and get going, as free throws have been a struggle for Basham. Four for eight today. Healy rattles that one down on the baseline. And that's Lonnie White. Finding her buddy Peely on the on the baseline in the short corner. Yeah, get you some extra minutes if you're running wide, she's staying out there. But the largest lead of the game for this Utah team now at 15. And the pass off the mark, out to Gray. The eight of too much quickness. And those are the you know just the mistakes, young team. She leads the conference in assists per game, and Che leads the conference in rebounds per game. Eight assists today as Lonnie White handed the passing lane. The steal, long stride, layup, good. She's a showboater. I'm telling you. <laughs> she looked right at school in Orange County. She looked right over at Coach. Says, I'd like to have some more minutes, please. <laughs> She's earning them today. 6-0 <laughs> Utah run. Extending the lead even more. I have to throw in the fun fact that my mother is a graduate of Modern Day High School. All right. There you go. Back before they had girls basketball. I bet you would have played, though, had they had she it. She ran a little track. They had a little bit of track. <laughs> okay. and, but uh, tremendous high school program. Yep. Moving out of the Irvine area. Peely like in the right place. For Utah, they're not a mid-range shooting. They don't look for those mid-range shots. They they either they go for threes or they go for layups and steals. You know, they're they're not always looking for that little jumper, and so it takes a little time to adjust. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, they're definitely not looking for it off the dribble. Friendly bounce in the home gym for Alyssa Peely. Contact down low. Jenna Johnson standing her ground. We're going to call an offensive foul. But man, she does a great job. A little undersized, and she just, yep. you know, she's just savvy and smart. A lot of ice baths would be my would be my guess for Jenna Johnson. Also, by the way, got her 1,000th career point earlier. So congratulations on that big milestone for Jenna Johnson. That's more to come. <laughs> yep. Just keep adding to it. Let's go to the money spot. Cha-ching. The Ducks, we should also mention, they've lost six in a row, but at least five of those six as White swats it right to Che. High post. Hits it. Five of the six losses, though, to top 20 teams. Yes. Here's another one today, and then they go home to face USC and UCLA. So seven games in a row, they're facing top 20 teams. Yeah, just not a... Not a fun conference when you've got this young, injured team. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough stretch of play for this Oregon team. Jenna Johnson, high post, she's liking it. Didn't quite work out. Ten assists for Yanesh Vieta today as Gray is the lefty layer. And now they'll let the clock wind down this crowd in their pink. Up and cheering. Loving the bounce back from a tough one on Friday night. Yeah, they... they uh, they they won, but you know they they stayed in the moment. They didn't. Uh, I thought you know, and Oregon came at them. They made a run. Sure I mean, it was it was this was not an easy game, but I think uh, Utah's maturity.